Hey guys, Captain Walnut here. I finally have figured out this mob sorting system. I apologize if my voice is a little off. I've been so close to breakthrough for actually a pretty long, for so long, that I just had to stay up and finish this darn thing. But it's done. I got it. Yay. Uh, so I got the tall mobs are sorted out. We already can separate Endermen and Spiders out, so all that was left was the zombies, creepers, and skeletons. So here we go. Um. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk about how it works, and then I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you working after I talk about how it works. So first things first, thank you to Roboticost for helping me out with uh, some of these piston things. I needed it to be on a 1.5 clock because that tick where um, the piston's operating on a half tick, so the game tick where the piston operates on a half tick makes the game think that the sand block is both there and not there. Um... And that allows the skeleton to, sh to attempt to shoot at the uh, snow golem without actually being able to hit them. Roboticost sent me a screenshot using the trick uh, where you have the piston cut off its own signal, which creates a one clock. Um, I basically linked two of those together to make a 1.5 clock. And I'm sure this has been done before. I did design this myself, but I'm sure people have done this exact same thing. It's not that original. Um, but yeah... So let's jump right in here. Um, yeah. Okay. Ah, get in. Okay. So if I was a mob, I would. Uh, if I moved through here, I'd get hit by a snow golem snowball and get pissed off with the snow golem and then be ready to attack him. And I was trying to overload this thing earlier so that there, this thing can get overloaded, and I'll talk about how to fix that in just a second. Um, but then you'd come up the mob evader if I was a mob, and I was just flying there. Um, and then you come here. So the first mob to get separated out is the skeletons. And they see the snow golem and shoot, then track off to the right. And these signs allow them to think they can walk there, but instead they fall down the pit. Um, half the time their arrows will hit here or the glass, the rest of the time it will hit the sand block. The next mob to get separated out is the zombies. Um, if you try to separate them based on behavior, i.e. letting the creepers and zombies get close enough such that the creepers go off to their right, that means you have to let the zombies get close enough to the snow golem that they'll actually be able to hit the snow golem through the block and kill the snow golem. So instead, we're going to separate them based on speed. So zombies are a lot slower than creepers, so most of the time they'll actually fall down this hole, whereas creepers will just jump right over it. Um, sometimes the zombies will miss the hole and hit this pressure plate, so I got this thing perfectly timed such that it'll knock the zombie right into the drink without hitting the uh, creeper. The creeper is fast enough to get past the uh, pressure plate. So it gets in there and knocks you in. Um, and I'm debating whether or not to keep the quick trigger device or whatever. But then they hit this uh, little water path here and the creepers get sucked into their holding pen. So let me get out of here and repair this hole and I'll load it up with mobs and show you. Uh, there, that one too. So we'll just do some zombies. And then um, some uh, creepers. And I'd like you to watch over here them all getting hit by the snow golem. No, that doesn't actually hurt them. It just, the pink means that they're getting pissed off. Um, so yeah. So they all come down here. And then go up and over. And you see the first two zombies fell down that hole. Um, next one fed on the hole. Next one also fed on the hole, so they didn't actually use a pressure plate. You see the creepers are fast enough to walk right past that pressure plate without triggering it. And then we got the skeletons coming in here. They shoot and fall. And I know it's getting nighttime, so I hope you guys can still see. Um, but yeah. Okay, so there you go. And all the skeletons got sorted out. So like I said, this thing can get a little overloaded. Um, and so I've started to come up with a system to regulate the speed at which mobs could go through that system. I mean, it works really well, and if you don't care about a creeper occasionally winding up in the zombie pin, then this thing's fine. Just use this. Um, but if you do care perfectly about this, then you need to set up a system like this. Um, now in 1.1, the fence gates will open when there's redstone, and close when there's a block update. So it moving is a block update. And you see this, and let me get out a torch just in case you guys can't see. Um, yeah, 
go there. So this little block right here is powered. Um, there we go. And so right here, the fence gate opens, and then when it gets over here, it closes. So the idea is, I don't know the exact geometry of this thing yet, but uh, you would use it such that the mob would come in here and land inside the fence gate, which would then close on them so they couldn't move. And theoretically, this system would be used to make sure that only one mob at a time would be in each block, um, and then get shoved out into the next area, and you could set up the timing to make sure that it went through at the perfect rate that this system can handle it. Um, last thing with this is this zombie can despawn if you're too far away. It's a pretty easy fix for that. You just need a stone pressure plate so that when the stone pressure plate becomes deactivated, that means the zombie despawned. So you would have flip a water switch down here, which would send the mobs somewhere else since the mobs that are currently in the system, um, send the mobs off to die since the mobs that are currently in the system aren't necessarily pissed off at the snow golem. Um, since the snow golem isn't necessarily shooting. Um, and have another water switch up here, which would also prevent the mobs from flowing into here. And then you would just pull a new zombie from your zombie reservoir. And it'd also be okay if it was a creeper, if there was a creeper in here. Because it's not like the creeper can shoot back at the snow golem from that distance. Or get mad at the snow golem from that distance. But yeah, and then once it, the stone pressure plate activated again, then that gate would open and this switch would open or move back to its original position. Okay, well, uh, thanks for watching. Um, you, we can definitely check off mob sorting off of our list. All right, uh, so talk to you later. Bye-bye. Oh, and one last thing that I'd like to point out is that now that we have... there's a, there, People have asked me why the heck do we want to bother sorting out mobs, and there's many reasons for them, the least of which would be hey, I just want to collect one drop, so use a super high efficiency mob system, um, kill off the other guys you don't care about, keep the one you do care about, so let's say you're trying to collect gunpowder, so I'll keep creepers only, and kill off the other two, and then when you're ready for gunpowder, come by, kill off all the creepers, and collect all that gunpowder, because then you don't have to worry about the gunpowder despawning. But, one of the, one of the other things you could do is a, not only a record studio, but a fully automatic cobblestone generator. And the way you would do that is you would pipe the creepers and the skeletons into a storage bay where um, the skeletons would get pissed off at a new snow golem and then try and shoot that new snow golem. But instead of shooting the snow golem, they would accidentally hit a creeper, quote unquote accidentally. And the whole room would be made out of cobble, the creeper would go over to the skeleton, blow up, kill the skeleton, the creeper itself would die, and also a bunch of cobble would explode and then fall down, the little blocks of cobble would fall down to a water stream, which would carry it away to you. And then you'd have an uh, one of those piston-based cobblestone generators come over to refill it. So it'd be an automatic cobblestone harvester. I know it's not that hard to get cobblestone, but hey, I like to automate everything in Minecraft, so that might be my next step with this. But yeah, again, thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.